into my dungeon. Welcome to Cauldron Script. I'm your host, Master Cauldron. If you're new to the show, I use my 24 years of BDSM experience and 20 years working in the psychology field to dispel myths, get rid of stereotypes, and answer your questions about BDSM. You can call in at 865-268-4005 to leave your questions or visit the crypt at cauldronscrypt.com. On this episode of The Crypt, it is an announcement about where I've been and where the show is going to go. So let me hit those rules to love by, and then we'll jump into that. Rule number one, safe, sane, consensual, and informed. Rule number two, kinky, that's K&K, and and comes from the Kinky app, available on all platforms, but not a sponsor. It stands for knowledge, no intolerance, kindness, and integrity. Rule number three, the quote from Mr. Paul Young. Submission is not about authority, and it's not about obedience. It is all about relationships of love and respect. Okay, so cryptors, as you know, I've been away for a little too long. Um, Normally, I post either weekly or every other week, and it's probably been a month since I put out an episode. To my Patreon producers, thank you for sticking with me. Uh, I did not charge you for the month of March. Uh, Special thanks to Shadowy Fox for your patronage. He is a personal friend that I've met within the local community. An amazing, amazing person and a fellow sadist. So we uh, have a lot of conversations, a lot of good times, and helped each other out quite a bit uh, in the recent past. So thank you uh, so much for coming on board. It means the world to me. Another new producer is Mac N. Miller. Mac N. Miller, thank you so very much. Uh, I appreciate you as well. I don't believe I know you personally other than some emails back and forth. And I'm very grateful for your support and your encouragement as well. Now to move into the announcement. No Cauldron Script, a BDSM 101 podcast, is not going away. Uh, I got to a point where after over three years, I needed to take a break. Uh, I have been going to party after party working on getting the the Crypt Knoxville dungeon open, which it is not yet open. Uh, I still have not been able to find an appropriate location, though I have looked in over a 100 places thus far. It's either too close to a residential, it's too much space for too much money, or it's too close to a church. That's been the issue. One place was too close to a school, but it it wouldn't have uh it was not a good space anyway, so I wasn't concerned about that after I took a quick look around. But all of this, my regular full time job, things constantly changing there, which they just changed again this past week on Wednesday and then changed again on Friday. And it's not that I don't deal well with change. It's that the changes they're making don't just affect my job. It affects when I'm at my job, uh, which affects my life at home, my life within the community, my life with my submissive. And it completely just, you know, sends everything into a whirlwind. Uh, And then they said that things may change yet again this coming week. Uh, So, All in all, that would be six massive just flipping things around on me in the matter of a month. So I have quit going to Munches temporarily. I have deactivated my FetLife account. I'm not going to any parties and or or any social events. And I'm taking a break from the show until April. So don't unsubscribe. There's no need. Uh, I will be back. I'm, I'm still planning things out. I'm still working on those episodes that I've told you about with, uh, uh, oh God, 
um, quid pro quo BDSM, tit for tat, uh, which is a very interesting concept. That is, I talk so much about romantic BDSM and DS relationships from my point of view, because that's the way that I like them. But there's a lot of people out there, and I mean a lot of people, where it has nothing to do with any type of romantic connection. Uh, at first, especially, it's literally, okay, I will do this for you if you do this for me. It's more transactional. And there's nothing at all wrong with that. But in saying that it's transactional to some people would make it sound like it's it's prostitution. And that's not at all what it is in monetary service. And really, who cares if it is anyway? But there are those that would take offense to me saying that it's transactional. So I feel the need to explain that because I don't want to offend anybody and then miss the point of what I'm eventually going to say when I record this episode for the third time. Uh, And that was another thing is, you know, you've heard of writer's block. Well, I kind of got that from all of the, the stress and things that I've been under, which Roxy Bear, uh, Master Gabriel, Shadowy Fox, um, Patrick, uh, Lily Chaos, Baby Love and Sir, uh, Mac and Miller. Um, I know I'm forgetting people. I'm my wife, my submissive, Roxy Bear's husband, whose name I know, but his vanilla name is all that I know, and I don't want to say that. Uh, so, so many people in the past few weeks have have reached out. Freedom Hills, just thank you for being an ear, being somebody to, that I can bounce things off of or whatever the case may be. I'm so incredibly grateful. And again, I know I'm leaving some people out, but that writer's block thing is a real thing. And it's just when I go to put something out there, my mind just completely stops. So. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not editing this. I'm just going to put it out. And I just took a drink of some Coke Zero, not a sponsor. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's what's up. That's what's going on. And again, the show is not ending. I'm OCD, and I wouldn't be able to end the show on the number of episodes that we have right now anyway. Uh, If I did that, it would be on episode 100, and I think we're at 90. And I'm not saying that does not mean that I'm going to end the show at at episode 100. I'm not. I've actually got things planned out for like four seasons, and this is just season two. Uh, So don't don't think it's going anywhere, okay? So, yeah, that's, that's about it. Short, quick, to the point. Kinda as much as I can be, but that's that's what's up. Uh, thank you to all of the Patreon producers. If things are not back on track uh, as soon as I get into April, then I will let you know on Patreon. So make sure that you're checking those Patreon emails. And I know that this is also going to sound really strange considering I'm telling you that I'm taking a break, but it's been, again, three and a half years that I've been doing this pretty much at least every two weeks, if not every week. And so keep that in mind when I say this, but there have been people that are asking for daily episodes and I, not just one or two, there have been a lot of people asking, Hey, Cauldron, can't you put out like five days a week, seven days a week, uh, you know, even if they're only 15 minutes long, we would, you know, or they would personally like that. Even if I took like some of my long interviews that I did and broke them up uh, to make it like a five-part mini series, if I, you know, that way I could do a longer interview, you know, hour and 15, hour and a half with somebody like, Stephen Ng, who is the psychotherapist that I talked to, that I'm going to talk to again, hopefully, uh, where we're going to get into psychology and religion and BDSM. 
and where all of that combines because that's actually where he focuses his practice. So, yeah, in order for me to do that, that's a full time job. And I'm already working a few jobs. So I would need the Patreon support to be uh, after they took their cut around two thousand dollars, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month. And considering how many subscribers there are, if everybody pledged a dollar or you know five dollars, then that would definitely make it, and I could actually do this full time and I could run the dungeon full time but I don't expect that to happen I know it's a standard of about three percent of your total listener base supports on Patreon so yeah I don't expect that to happen I'm just telling you where it would need to be for that to happen because I don't know what has happened recently with podcasting trends as far as people wanting these daily episodes, but I have been hammered well up until I guess a week or two ago when I deactivated. Remember, I deactivated my FetLife account. I did not delete it. I just had to deactivate it so I could take a true break for a little bit. So I will reactivate it soon, you know, around April of 2020, if you're listening to this in the back catalog. but. Anyway, that's what it would take. Feel free. The link is in the show notes. You can get to it by going to cauldronscript.com slash Patreon. Uh, That is P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com. And uh, yeah, you can choose your level. There's a dollar, five, ten, twenty-five. Uh, even up to $4,000 a month, I think, or 2000 in one single pledge. But anyway, I don't really expect anybody to do that. I still can't believe that I have 20-something Patreon supporters as it is. It's such an honor that you guys not only open up your hearts, but your heart is easier to open up than your wallet is for most people. So that really tells me just how much you you care and how much you support the show. So thank you so very much for that. And to everybody, not just the Patreon producers, everyone that contacts me saying, hey, man, your your show, I binge listen. I found it last week and I've, I've already listened to the whole thing or, you know, wanting to tell me, hey, it sounded better when you did this or, you know, have you ever thought about trying this I'm not discouraged by productive criticism. So if you have any recommendations, please feel free to send those to me as well. My email still works, mastercauldron at gmail.com. Contact me, get in touch, uh, tell me what you think. Again, that is cauldronscript.com slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. It's patron with an E. So, all right. Oh. Uh, also, Patreon producer Ducky Monroe, a personal friend, um, someone that I've had impact scene with, is also a Patreon producer. Um, JK is a new Patreon producer. Just wanted to make sure that I was giving them a shout out. Freedom Hills, which is here in Tennessee, it is a a uh, huge play facility that's in between Knoxville and Nashville. I, I there's no way that I could give them any better recommendation than than it's just it wouldn't be possible. They are amazing people. The husband wife that run the place, own the place, live there, and the things that they have planned. There's going to be a primal hunt that they do sometime. This summer, I'll keep you posted on that as details come out. They have parties there, swinger parties, BDSM parties every month. You can search them on Facebook and ask for an invite to the group. Uh, Yeah, anyway, that is going to do it. This has been Master Cauldron for cauldronscript.com. I will be returning, so stand by and unearth the truth. <laughs>